The goal of sports science research is to make athletes better at their respective sports, and the key to doing so is having an understanding of what physiologically makes up a great athlete. In endurance running, there are many factors at play. However, one factor in particular may be a major contributor to endurance performance. This video will highlight running economy and a case for its importance in endurance training and racing. For a runner to perform at a high level in endurance events, multiple physiological factors are involved. Three main physiological factors known to contribute to success in distance running are your VO2 max, defined as the maximum amount of oxygen you can take in and use to produce energy, your fractional oxygen utilization, defined as your ability to sustain a high percentage of your VO2 max for a long amount of time, and your running economy, known as your efficiency at consuming oxygen at a submaximal running pace. Comparing the performance of a group of runners who are all of similar ability and training level and who have relatively close VO2 max numbers, the physiological factor running economy has been shown to be a more accurate predictor of performance over VO2 max. Running economy is the amount of oxygen consumed at a submaximal running pace. A runner with a good economy will consume less oxygen than a runner with a poor economy at the same pace. For example, two runners who have the exact same VO2 max could have very different running economy, leading to differences in their efficiency and performance. Specifically, a study looking at the relationship between running economy, VO2 max, and 10K race performance found that in a group of 12 distance runners, no relationship between VO2 max and 10K race time was found. However, there was a significant positive relationship between 10K race time and running economy. This study is a good example of how running economy may be a stronger predictor of endurance performance amongst a homogenous population. Running economy can be influenced by many different factors, some of which can be manipulated or modified for improvements, while others are biological. Your body mass distribution, your biomechanics, and gait style or pattern your environment, and your own specific training plan can all affect your running economy. However, it is important to note that alone, these factors do not make or break your running economy and certainly not your performance. These factors all work together to explain differences in running economy across runners, and there are many exceptions to these findings. Regular endurance training is obviously an effective way to improve your running economy. Years of consistency and increases in running volume have been suggested to directly improve your running economy. However, there is little longitudinal data tracking the effect of accumulated volume on these improvements. An interesting and informative case study on the Women's Marathon world record holder, Paula Radcliffe, has been done over the years tracking her progression. In the years leading up to her world record, her VO2 max on average did not change, staying at around 70 milliliters per kilogram per minute while her running economy, on the other hand, demonstrated up to 15% improvements. Changing your running economy through endurance training may be a long-term adaptation, and this supports the case for later age peaking in endurance runners. Running biomechanics is a heavily researched topic, and learning how biomechanical factors have the potential to affect your economy can be helpful for improvements. A few key biomechanical factors are your stride frequency and length, your vertical oscillation, and your ground contact time. Stride frequency or cadence will obviously vary depending on your speed, but research looking at the effect of stride frequency on running economy found that an optimal range for economical running at submaximal paces is in the range of 80 to 90 strides per minute. While this may be true, it appears that trained runners naturally choose a stride frequency that is very close to being optimal and minimal changes to their stride frequency do not appear to have an effect on running economy. However, untrained runners who have an inefficient stride frequency may benefit from adjustments to their cadence closer to the optimum range. Vertical oscillation, or how much you move up and down while you run, is another factor that has been shown to have an effect on your running economy. A study looking at how exaggerated vertical oscillation in female distance runners affects economy found decreases of up to 19% compared to a non-exaggerated running form. With more vertical oscillation, there may be a greater metabolic cost as more energy is needed to support your body weight. 
If vertical oscillation is high in a runner, they may benefit from adjustments which could positively affect their economy. Another highly studied biomechanical factor is ground contact time. However, the research is conflicting. Studies have shown both positive, negative, and no relationship of ground contact time with running economy. These variations in results may be due to the populations investigated, as well as their different strike patterns, making it difficult to suggest a contact time ideal for efficient running. Knowing how various factors affect your economy is important, and with this knowledge we can apply what we know to see positive effects on performance. Technology has played a big role in recent improvements in performances. A tool called Stride has come out claiming it has the ability to measure various biomechanical factors, as well as an algorithm with these factors, your speed, and your body weight, to give you a number known as your running power. Perhaps devices such as these could track or predict your running economy without the use of expensive testing, but much more research and validity is necessary before we can suggest them for daily use. Running economy is one physiological aspect that makes an endurance runner run fast and ways we can track and improve this through both training adaptations and manipulations will continually be of interest to both scientists and athletes looking to make their small but important performance gains.